bring in a bit of old school with the new school guys I'm excited for this fan Friday so we have the quash Murkrow man I have not seen that in a while but that's some pretty fun stuff so we're gonna see how it does with the Alolan Marowak I see that be being very powerful as well as just Nido King now that Neo Nido King is allowed with transfer cool we get to see the sheer force of madness all over again so let's go and watch how this one breaks down pre marina and the salazzle for the opponent well salazzle is just going to get absolutely wrecked by the Nido king and we're going to see what happens with the uh, murkrow so murkrow thunder wave onto the salazzle and that's just, that's just what you can do you can thunder wave try to reduce speed right there uh salazzle is going for that nasty plot so it shouldn't be too difficult to take care of for the next turn now that it has its speed reduced like that and Nido king just going to straight sludge bomb on the pre-marina and th that's right guys if you're new to Pokemon in the seventh generation and you haven't had time to play with a lot of the older Pokemon pre-bank, that's Nido King. The sheer force damage is absolutely nuts. So that was a very well done and calculated turn right there. That all right? If I paralyze Lazzle, I can take it out next turn. I can feather it. This is why Murkrow is just amazing, guys. I love this right now. So yeah, I, I'm gonna have to take a little bit of extra time after this battle to break it down. We do have another code. So we get to watch two battles like this. Done. Nido King, God sweep right here with the Murkrow providing support. I thought there was going to be more Quash action, but it doesn't matter. Especially when you're doing all this craziness right here. So that's a Magna Zone. And now the rest of his team is weak to the Earth Power and just dies. That's Nido King. So Murkrow has a Taunt on the Magna Zone, just in case. Also might have a Protect for later. Who knows what Magna Zone wants to do. Just a Flash Cannon. Not a lot of damage, I would imagine, onto the Nido King. Nido King tanks it up just fine. And Arcanine has reduced damage. Special Defense is going to drop. Doesn't really matter. Nido King with that Earth Power onto the Arcanine right there. So I'm guessing Scarf Flash Cannon for the Magna Zone for it to get that outspeed. But then that's where the Quash comes in. And wow. We just saw the entirety of Murkrow's kit. Just just perfect shutdown. The, the most perfect shutdown I've ever seen. And then done. That's Flamethrower. Magna Zone dies. Wow. All right, so like I said, guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna get into the next battle here in a bit. Cause I know I, I watched the audience retention, so like after every battle, it drops off just a bit. And if there's no more battles, it just plummets. But guys, we need that went by way too fast. We need to actually go and discuss what just happened there. So Murkrow, it was able to Thunder Wave Slazzle because it's like, all right, just gonna outspeed Pre Marina. It's slow. We one shot it anyways, and then Thunder Wave means no matter what Slazzle's gonna do, it's not gonna have enough to fully threaten either of those Pokemon. So they're gonna be alive at the end turn. They just outspeed Slazzle and you get the KO. After that, the Feather Dance onto Arcanine. You just you just have a utility for everything. If it's a Special Attacker, you can go and suppress it, or you can Thunder Wave it. If it's a Physical Attacker, you Feather Dance and forget it, and then you have Quash for anything that's outspeeding you afterwards and that was just perfection guys so i'm excited to see how the next battle goes as well i'm actually starting to wonder is this the return of nido king guys i like when you think about it nido king does really well against a lot of pokemon in the seventh generation that you flamethrow the celesteela and then you completely body a tapu koko and you just hit like a truck and then murkrow i haven't seen the quash murkrow in a while but i love murkrow as a support it is one of my favorite double support Pokemon out there with that prankster prankster doesn't work against dark types so that kind of sucks right there but Nido King can still hold its own pretty well so the opponent leading off with a questionable shiny team right here and we can see what is going to happen so Hariyama Dusclops Hariyama is probably going to fake out onto Nido King Murkrow is going to do stuff so fake out Nido King that's going to be the thing and then Murkrow taunting yeah if you have the taunt you use it on Dusclops so Dusclops shut down right there Nido King flinches and then the turn pretty much plays out like that we see the guts Hariyama as well for the insane damage next so has to force the withdrawal on the Dusclops right there with the taunt going into the scissor that's fancy because there's now now things are getting crazy so feather dance on to the Hariyama also going to be there to try to reduce as much power because that guts close combat that's going to be very scary we see the sludge bomb on to the Hariyama big damage but not enough and Hariyama is a very health bulky Pokemon so close combat also doing a lot showing that the the feather dance was very necessary but this is going to be a really sketchy turn like what do you do for this turn do you deal with the hariyama do you just flamethrower the scissor that's that's kind of the question right now and we see that it will be a mega scissor and i don't know how much it's going to threat like do you just feather dance scissor try to stop its swords dance and then take out the hariyama or just flamethrower the scissor so we're going to see detect right there 
Interesting, the opponent playing safe and defensive on that Hariyama, but Quash onto Scizor. Nothing's gonna happen right there. And then Neo King gets flamethrower. Quash flamethrower. Done. That's it. Super effective. Gone. That's like what like Nido King has insane neutral damage on that Earth Power and on that Sludge Bomb, but at the same time, it has great coverage because then you add a flamethrower, then you can add an ice beam, and you just hit so many Pokemon super effective. Now Zoomerill's on the field. That's something to Feather Dance as well. So Murkrow getting an outspeed on that Feather Dance. Priority plus one, but Zoomerill is a slow Pokemon. So even with that Aqua Jet, we're gonna see the damage onto the Nido King. So 126 down to 72. I guess the uh, Feather Dance wouldn't have, like, caused... Uh, if it wasn't for the Feather Dance, like, Nido King would still survive the Aqua Jet. So, bulks out the Aqua Jet. Sludge Bomb one-hit KOs. Murkrow sacrifices itself to make sure the Nido King stays safe in the event that that Aqua Jet goes crazy. And then, yeah, Hariyama does take down the Murkrow. But that's, that's like, it right there, guys. Hariyama, that's a quick outspeed into KO. We know it's just Dusclops left. And then the Marowak comes in. And Marowak, that's a Shadow Bone, and Dusclops takes a ton of damage as well. No longer taunted, so we might see what it does. And things are about to get fancy. So Thick Club, Hand the Life Orb, obvious, of course, right there. So the opponent forfeits, done, just like that. Those battles were fast and awesome. So yeah, Nido King is strong against the meta, and it's strong against a lot of Pokemon. And I wonder if there's like some guy shift in the seventh generation that's going to make it a lot more powerful than we've seen before. And then we have the Murkrow. And the Murkrow just did a lot while just. It, it's all about the right moves. Like you Feather Dance this, you Quash that, you Thunder Wave over there, and then you just win. So no Roost on the Murkrow. A little surprising right there. Um, especially because if they have like Dark type Pokemon that doesn't leave you with any options, at least you could Roost if it's Dark type and you can deal with the other Pokemon or something. Then the rest of the team follow up. I, I would like to see like Quash into Marowak Flame Charge, and then that's a KO right there. You have the Lightning Rod to keep Murkrow safe from like a stray electric hit just in case. And the Araquanid, again, it's just all damage. It's bulk damage with the Murkrow support. We already saw the perfection out of the Thunder Wave earlier, and just the, the weirdness that can happen. I love it. So there we go, guys. Like, if you haven't seen Nido King in a while, it is still hella viable. And that's amazing. So we'll have one more Fan Fridays coming up next. But I am impressed. I love this.